This is gonna be a complete beginner-friendly product visualization slash animation course. By the end of this course, you're gonna be able to create not only this animation, which you're looking at right here, but also all kinds of other animations, which can be created using the same techniques that you're gonna learn in this series. We're gonna start from scratch. We're gonna talk about modeling, label design, materials and textures, environment design, lighting and animating and rendering. Everything is going to be explained in this series. This can be useful for people in e-commerce, digital marketing of all sorts, social media promotion, real life advertising. Anytime you walk around town, you're gonna to start to see lots of places where 3D models have been used to create all sorts of advertisements. We're gonna start with some very simple stuff so if you're a beginner you're going to be able to follow that very easily and towards the end of this series things are going to get a little bit more complicated so even if you're an experienced blender user you're going to have lots to learn here if you want to learn more about the tools and techniques which you're going to see be used throughout this series i explained everything that i know about blender inside my blender course you can check that out with the link below now let's get started with episode number one one thing I want to point out to you before we begin is this is all going to be one object. We're making a protein tub which is still wrapped in its original wrapping so there's no disconnection between the lid and the body. We're going to make everything part of the same object. That's going to look a lot better in the final result. If you were trying to create a lid, the workflow would be a little bit different. I have lots of videos on my YouTube channel where I made lids for other objects. So if you want to see that, then go check out my channel. You're going to find lots of situations where I did that. But for now, we're going to select this default cube right here, press X and delete it. Then with Shift A, you're going to go up here to mesh and add a new circle when you add a circle or any other default object you're going to get this little menu down here in this case it's called add circle but it might also be add cylinder or something else this is going to allow you to change some of the properties related to this object which you just added into your scene in this case we're going to change the number of vertices by default this is set to 32 we're going to change this to 16 this is going to make this object a little bit more blocky so it's going to have less geometry in it which is perfect for us because later on we're going to use a tool called subdivision surface modifier that's going to subdivide this and make it a lot smoother which means a lot more geometry is going to be added which means we don't want to have too much geometry before we do that because we're going to have way too much otherwise so now you can press tab to go to edit mode that's going to allow you to change the shape of this object so you can press f to fill this now with i you're going to inset this that's going to move this circle inwards and with s you can change the size of this inner circle and the reason we created this is so that we can extrude this up scale this down a little bit further that's going to create this little hole from the bottom and this is usually what you're going to find at the bottom of any sort of container like this now i'm going to use alt right click to select this edge loop around the bottom and i'm going to scale it up because i want this hole to be a little bit bigger i'm also going to use alt right click to select this face at the top and i'm going to press double g to slide this downwards and that's going to make the hole a little bit more shallow as well i just wanted to show you how you can change the shape of the hole now let's move on and let's create the body of this object so with alt right click we're going to select this outer edge loop here then you're going to press e to extrude and press z to lift it up on the z axis now you created some new geometry which you extended out of this outer edge here and you lifted it up as you can see this is now going to slowly become the body of this protein tub to make things a little bit easier you can press f to fill this now with G and Z, you can move this up or down if you want to. And now with this thing selected here at the top, we're going to press Control B to bevel this. That's going to allow us to create a smooth edge here. So you're going to have to scroll up a couple of times to add some more segments. And that's going to give you this round edge at the top. You want to make that approximately this wide for now. You can also scale this up on the Z axis if you want to change the shape a little bit. And then with Alt right click, we're also going to select this segment here at the bottom, which we're also going to bevel with Control B to make it a little bit more round. Now is a good time to add a subdivision surface modifier so we can make this object a little bit more smooth. To do that, you're going to go over here to the modifiers properties tab, click on add modifier, go to the generate section and down here you're going to find subdivision surface you're going to click on that increase the levels here to two and now as you can see your object looks a lot smoother and now we're going to be able to continue working on it it's going to give us a better idea of what this is going to look like in the end so go back to edit mode with tab select this face over here you're going to extrude this up a little bit and now we're going to start creating the top part of this container once you extrude this up you're going to press e to extrude again but you're going to right click to snap it back to its original place now we extruded this so we have new geometry but it's placed right on top of this surface that we had here before this is good because we want to scale this up a little bit with s then extrude it up a little bit more then extrude it once again but just a little bit and scale this part down a little bit and now extrude again and this is going to be the top part of the lid it's up to you how far you want to take this i'm also going to scale this down and i also want to make this edge around the top a little bit sharper currently it's a little bit too soft 
to fix that I'm going to press control B. I'm going to scroll down so I only have two segments like this. And when I confirm this by clicking, I'm going to get this bevel menu down here. We're going to set the number of segments here to two and the shape value to one. In this case, I'm going to undo a couple of steps with control Z because I don't want this to be sitting at this angle. I'm going to scale it up a little bit and then I'll bevel it again with a smaller bevel because I want it to be a little bit sharper. Now we have the basic shape for this container, but there's still a lot of adjustments that we can make to change this shape. For example, I want to make the top part of this container a little bit larger. And to do that, I'm going to press Z to go to Y wireframe view. I changed up some shortcuts. So by default, it might not be Z for you. You can also go to wireframe by clicking on this button up here. Now align your view with the side like this, and you're going to press B to get your box select tool and select everything like this. Alternatively, you can deselect everything with A and go to face select mode by clicking on this thing up here. Now select the surface at the top with right click and press control plus until you select all the geometry, which is associated with the lid here. Now you can press S to scale it. You can lift it up. You can change a whole lot of things about this with control R. You can add a loop cut here to make this part a little bit sharper as well. Then while I'm still in face select mode, I'm going to press alt right click on this edge right here and scale this up a little bit, then switch to vertex select mode and select this edge loop here and scale that up a bit. Take this one down here with alt right click and lower it down with G and Z. As you can see now, I'm just playing around with this shape. I'm trying to move the geometry back and forth a little bit to see what's going to end up looking a little bit better. I'm also going to go to wireframe view and use the box select tool to select everything like this and lift it up with G and Z a little bit. That's because I want this to be a little bit higher, but it's up to you how high you want to make this. Another thing that you can do is make this bottom part go inwards a little bit. So we're going to press control R in edit mode to add a loop cut around here somewhere. In wireframe view, you're going to use your box select tool to select everything down here and scale that down a little bit with S. I don't really like how this angle looks. So I'm going to select this edge loop here and scale it up with S a little bit. And with control R, give me a couple more loop cuts, which I can place around here so I can make this part look a little bit sharper. I'm also going to select everything like this and scale it down on the Z axis. And once your shape is more or less ready, you're going to press tap to go back to object mode, then go up here to object, shade smooth. And as a final adjustment, I want to make the lid on this object a lot larger. So I'm going to do something to change that. The problem is that if I select everything up here, and I want to make this a lot larger by scaling with S, this geometry over here gets in the way. So I have to get rid of this first. And I can do that by going to vertex select mode, pressing alt right click to select this. Now press X dissolve edges. That's just going to remove them. So they're no longer going to be in the way. Now you can select all this with control plus scale it up with S and make it as big as you want. And now we got a good basic shape for our protein powder. This is going to be the foundation of everything. Next, we're going to learn how to create a good label for this. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'm going to see you in the next one tomorrow.